I have been banging the drum about this. You, if you've been watching the channel uh, for the past couple of weeks, uh, or by the way, if you are new to the channel, please do like and subscribe because you may hear that ringing because, hark, tis the Brexit phone. What's this? I called it. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> so what are we talking about? Well, the new... Uh, well, not really newness, shall we say, anymore, of the of the Brexiteers. And these are people like uh, Ian Duncan Smith, Boris Johnson, uh, Nigel Farage. These are the Brexiteers that we, do, that we have to talk about. So, they have been very adamant about, we want to leave the European Union. We want to get a fantastic deal. However, however, deep, deep in the bowels of Westminster... Underneath the Houses of Parliament, beneath the cellars beware Guy Fawkes once plotted to blow the whole thing up, you will find the evil headquarters of the European Research Group. Though never actually having any done any research on Europe, they know everything about Europe, apparently. And now, and now, they're hatching their latest evil scheme. Yes, after managing to successfully jettison Theresa May because there was clearly just not enough room for, well, what they wanted to do. After all, in the series indicative votes, remember, to just up and leave and go on to WTO terms, they only managed to get 63 votes. So, the writing was on the wall. We have to get rid of Theresa May. We have to run the Brexit election. We have to convince people this is a second referendum and that they have to vote for us. And lo and behold, we've got our majority. And what's this? Boris Johnson? Yes, please, give him to us. And now they've got Boris Johnson in charge. Fantastic. Go to the evil checklist. Cha-ching. What's this? Withdrawal agreement? We don't like the withdrawal agreement. But what's this? We need Boris to sell something to people? Tell you what, sell the withdrawal agreement as the oven-ready deal. So Boris Johnson wins. Excellent. 80-seat majority. Bango. Hung Parliament. Completely free. We can do it. You know, check that checklist off yet again. And now, all we have to do is we have to start convincing other MPs that we can ditch the withdrawal agreement. And ladies and gentlemen, this is nothing new. Go all the way back to David Davis being the head of the guy for the in charge of, you know, leaving the office for the European Union. Which you'd think we'd still actually need, considering we're still in that process. But of course, Boris shut it down for a very easy PR win to say, Brexit's been done! And of course, all these jobs just move back into other Whitehall offices, you know. <laughs> but the idea of, of him, what he said back in the day was, oh, it doesn't matter about this withdrawal agreement because, um, yeah, we can just tear it up. Wait, that's an international agreement. If Britain does that, we will become an international pariah. What on earth are you talking about? But just in this past couple of weeks, you have seen more and more Conservative MPs push for the withdrawal agreement to be just ditched, regardless of whether we get a deal or not. This would be absolute madness. This is the foundations upon which we will need to build a, a, a deal and a withdrawal, an you know, actual deal. And even if we tear it up, all that's going to happen is when we go back to the EU, because we need a deal from the EU, they are our major market, and trade gravity is a thing, look it up, if you don't want to know what it is, we need a deal with them. And being in the European Union and single market and customs union is and always was the best deal we could get. Being outside treated as a third country is going to damage this country, economically, job-wise, you name it. And doing it at this time is going to be an absolute catastrophe. So, they managed to get their withdrawal agreement through after saying even, you know, Ian Duncan Smith, of all things this week, stood up in Parliament and said, uh, I don't like the withdrawal agreement because I didn't read it properly. 
more or less what he said. But this was the guy of when they were pushing through the withdrawal agreement saying, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't need to scrutinise the withdrawal agreement. It's fine as it is. This is the oven-ready deal. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I put to you with this article that we are going to get another backbench Tory rebellion based on chucking the withdrawal agreement. So, this comes from uh, The Independent. And it's Boris Johnson's next Tory rebellion could be on Brexit. As Eurosceptic MPs wake up to the true nature of the withdrawal agreement. Boris Johnson seemed to have ended the Conservative Party's agonies over Brexit last year by negotiating a new withdrawal agreement with the EU. It wasn't a new withdrawal agreement. It was the exact same withdrawal agreement Theresa May had. And winning the backing of every single Tory MP. At least once a rump of rebellious Remainers had been purged. The hardline Brexiteers who brought down Theresa May over fears her Brexit deal would leave the UK in Brussels orbit indefinitely. Could have been expected to kick up over a fuss over her successor's replacement agreement. While it ditched the backstop agreement so they, they so hated, it was full of other provisions previously ex uh, opposed by the Eurosceptics, such as a hefty divorce payment. What's more, the new withdrawal agreement creates a border in the Irish Sea, with customs and regulatory checks on goods crossing from Great Britain to Northern Ireland, a provision loathed by the Democratic Unionist Party, which was a close ally of the Tory Brexiteers, through the May era. Nevertheless, not a single member of the European Research Group voted against the deal, instead hailing Mr Johnson as a political hero for persuading the EU to revisit the original deal. During the general election campaign, they took to social media to boast of the oven-ready deal and agreed that after the Conservative victory, it was duly passed into law. Now, only six months later, after Brexit, le after Britain legally left the EU, have MPs become to kick up a fuss. Former Tory leader Ian Duncan Smith said this week, whilst the UK wants to have a good trade relationship with the EU as a sovereign state, the EU has different ideas. They want our money and they want us to stop being a competitor. The withdrawal agreement we signed last year sadly helps them. He pointed out specific to the provisions making the UK responsible for part of the EU's loan book, which he claimed could land the Treasury with a bill of over £160 billion. Last month, the Centre for Brexit Policy issued a report endorsed by veteran backbenchers Bill Cash and Owen Peterson demanding the wholesale replacement of the withdrawal agreement, which it labelled a poison pill. The think tank is led by John Longworth, a businessman and ex-MEP who was also enthusiastic about Mr Johnson's deal and left the Brexit party and joined the Conservatives in order to endorse it. The irony of senior Brexiteers turning on a deal they once enthusiastically welcomed is palpable. It has been the cause of complete schadenfreude and for some Remainers who are still licking their wounds, but it raises the political stakes for the Prime Minister. After clashing with backbenchers over China and COVID-19, he could find it increasingly too tricky to offer any concessions to Brussels in a trade negotiations this year, fearing a rebellion from the same people who doomed his predecessor's premiership. And ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Now, I've said before, I've got three ways in which Boris leaves. He's got the Christmas delivery date. And but Boris leaves around Christmas. The second date will be somewhat after, maybe about May, April. And he just says, right, I'm done, I'm off. And of course, the final one is that somehow, somehow, in some majestic way, as somehow Boris is often to do, he manages to survive up until the next general election. However, Boris's name is such mud by this point, the Conservatives just have to get rid of him. They replace him with either Gove or even 
or even Ricky, uh, Ricky, uh, Rishi Sunak, shall we say. And those are what uh, potentially I can see happening. And you've got the seeds of all the potential re rebellion to be planted. And here's the thing. They've got no one else to blame for this but themselves. Brexit is their baby. It's their love child. The one that was birthed, they once thought, from Theresa May. Not, not Theresa May, from Margaret Thatcher. And now they've carried for years. Carrying it, hopefully. Hopefully nurturing it. Finally forcing a, a referendum, which they won by complete surprise. And now... They're in a situation where it doesn't matter to them. They want more. They've got something and then they want more. They just want more. These people are too greedy. They only won the referendum by 2%. This was no, by no means a complete and utter clear victory for them. And anyone, I'm sorry, even if you're a Brexiteer, that slight majority does not justify the kind of hard Brexit the Conservatives are delivering. Remember, Boris Johnson once advocated, as the Leaves platform, that we could remain in the single market and customs union. Why are we not doing that? I thought that was what Brexit was meant to look like. But of course, that was part of the plan. Be as fluid and as wavy as you possibly can and ladies and gentlemen we are about to enter into the crisis of crises because you know what we're about to win the argument in a spectacular fashion because we don't have to say anything we just have to let brexit happen and then all we have to do is well maybe we should uh you know, rejoin uh, the single market. Maybe we should uh, rejoin the customs union. Oh, maybe, uh, yeah, we should uh, we should just rejoin the EU to have more say in, in what goes on in the EU, since it is our main major market. All roads lead us back to joining the EU. It's only a matter of time. And trust me, it ain't going to be as long as the Brexiteers think it might be. It might not going to be another 40 years, I can tell you that. But, sooner or later, we will rejoin the EU. And ladies and gentlemen, Brexiteers, you had your time. But Brexit was an evil spawn of Satan that had no policies. It has no policies attached to it. You can't say what Brexit is going to do. It's built on wish fulfillment and complete fantasies and the denial of reality. And that cannot stand at all. A house built on quicksand will only just sink. And that was what Brexit has been built on. Complete lies, con artistry and fantasy stories. So, thank you for watching the video today. Uh, if you did like it, please do uh, like and share it around. If you are new to the channel, please do subscribe. And of course, there are links below if you would like to support the channel in militarily. I have a Patreon link below, as well as a one-off donation link if you'd like to support us in that way. If not, please just like the video. It does help massively. So, thanks, and we'll see you all next time.